Ooh, the W-looking graph. Again, it's given to us in function notation. The colored sheets we did at the beginning of the year, those would be called explicit notation because you had the actual formula. Y equals square root of X is the actual equation of that graph. Here, they're not telling us what this graph is. We don't know its equation. We're just given to it. It's just some graph, and it's J of X in function notation. So again, sketch the graph after a translation of four units to the left and five units down. So if we're doing a bunch of points, I'm sort of like, well, these seem to be like key points. If I take that point and I go four to the left, one, two, three, four, and five down, one, two, three, four, five, that would end up there, one, two, three, four. Oh, I didn't go four. I can't count. One, two, three, four, and five down. One, two, three, four, and five down. This one, one, two, three, four, five down. I can find out where those three points would be after going four to the left and five down. And then I just try to draw the graph in the same shape. One thing about your textbook, when your textbook has a graph and it ends at the top of the graph, it should have arrowheads pointed on the end of it, but it just they haven't done that in the textbook, but whenever you do your work, we always have arrowheads to indicate that the graph keeps on going, which will be something important in case they ask us about domain and range, which this question does again. So again, I'm going to reread the question because I got so excited about sketching it. Yes, I sketched the graph, but did I write the equation? No. So what is the equation of our graph in terms of the function? Notice the language is here again, in terms of the function j. So they want an equation, so I need an equal sign. y is equal to. The function j needs to be on the right-hand side of my equation. I have two translations. Four to the left, that will show up inside my function as a plus four. And five down will show up outside of my function as a minus 5. State the domain and range of each function. So I guess we have to do the original one's domain and range, and our new graph's domain and range for the original one. Does it have a smallest x value? Well, you've got to be careful, because if you're going from the left, the first thing I hit is the arrowhead which isn't a stop. What does the arrowhead mean? The arrowhead means it's going on forever in actually two different directions. That it keeps going up forever, but as it keeps going up forever, it's going to keep going to the left forever. So it has no smallest value. If we go to the right-hand side, we got an arrowhead as well, which means it keeps going to the right. No largest value. In other words, the domain is everything. We can either write that like this, or like this. For the range, there is a smallest y value. It's 0. But there is no biggest y value, so we say y is greater than or equal to 0. Now, if you were asked for domain and range, you don't have to write them both you get to choose which one you want to do. Right now, I'm just going to show you both of them for the first couple, and then I'm going to start randomly switching between them just so that you get familiar with both. Because if a question was draw something with this domain and you're not used to the format that it's in, then you won't be able to, to know how to do it. So for the blue graph, it's domain and range. Does it have smallest x value? No, it still has a domain of everything. Its range, though, now the smallest y value is at negative 5. It's 
So I've written the equation. I've stated the domain and range of each function. And maybe you want to do this too when you reread a question. Do little check marks to say, yeah, I've done that, I've done that, I've done that. It feels like you've made sure that you've done all the things that you need to do. So for question two, Above this one, you can write 8, 9, and 10. The nice thing about writing the numbers above the question is if you're working on question 9 and you're like stuck, you might look back in your notes and go, oh, it's, maybe it's related to something here. Sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes like 9 is its own standalone question and you might get stuck on it. So then go to questions 8, 9, and 10 and circle them as well. 